Jupiter has a lot of moons, somewhere between 80 and 100 of them. But there are a few that are particularly interesting. These are the icy ocean moons. They're largely covered in ice and rocks, but below the surfaces, we believe a liquid ocean churns away. In particular, Europa is a moon of Jupiter that seems to be particularly appealing, as it has a lot of the conditions that could possibly host life. Below its icy crust lies a salty ocean of liquid water and a rocky seabed. If there are some tasty vents spewing out the right chemicals and minerals, then this could replicate the conditions on Earth where we think life began. As such, Europa is being studied a lot right now and in the future, and JWST has just turned its enormous golden mirror at the moon. What it found was pretty amazing. The telescope saw evidence for carbon dioxide on the icy surface of Europa. This is particularly interesting because while we knew the moon had the potential for good life-bearing conditions in the ocean, we'd never seen the chemicals like carbon that are needed for life until now. All life on Earth is carbon-based, so if we're gonna find anything at all that's similar to Earth life, we're gonna need some carbon. That's not to say there is life on Europa, just that we have one more piece of evidence that the right conditions and ingredients seem to be present. Along with this research, we got a sweet image of Europa in near-infrared light from JWST's NERCAM instrument. It might look blurry, but it's hard to emphasize just how small Europa is from the telescope's point of view. The galaxies and nebulae it takes beautiful images of are a lot further away but they're also a lot bigger, and that's why they look so much better resolved in other JWST images. In reality, taking an image this clear from over 630 million kilometers away is incredible. Carbon dioxide was seen in a particular spot on Europa's surface. Here, we see the image of Europa on the left, and compositional maps from spectroscopy data in the other three panels. These are each made from data taken by NERSPEC, the near-infrared spectrograph on JWST, which breaks down light into its component wavelengths, and that lets us work out the chemicals that are present on the surface of the moon. NERSPEC gives us a resolution of 200 by 200 square miles on Europa, which compared with its diameter of 1,944 miles explains why the maps are still quite pixelated but they're more than enough to give us a lot of information still and show us where the signals of different chemicals are coming from on the moon. The white spot towards the bottom right of the map is a region of Europa known as Tara Regio, and this is the main place where carbon dioxide was found. There's also a little region to the left called Powys Regio that also has CO2 in it. Any pixel in these maps that is white had evidence of carbon dioxide in this research. Just as a side note, the terrain on the moon at both of these locations is designated as chaos terrain, meaning loads of features like cracks, ridges, and plains are all jumbled together in a big mess. I just think that's cool and pretty rock and roll. And you can see this other video I made to see why I will now be describing Greenland as chaos country, since it has a surprising amount in common with the surface of Europa. The initial analysis of this also suggests that the CO2 didn't come from meteorite impacts or other external sources, but rather came up from the subsurface oceans in the relatively recent past. Europa's surface is covered in deep ridges that might be important here. We think they allow for tasty chemicals that land on the surface to be transferred downwards to the oceans, potentially feeding any moon bugs living down there. These interesting chemicals can land on the surface of Europa after being spewed out by eruptions and plumes from Jupiter's other ocean moons, creating complex molecules that might end up in Europa's ocean. Likewise, we're now seeing evidence that might suggest they can also be a vector for moving carbon and other useful things to the surface of the moon too. The reason we think that carbon dioxide is coming up from below is that CO2 isn't stable when it's on Europa's surface. This means over time it doesn't stay as carbon dioxide, and so for us to see it here, it must have emerged reasonably recently. This is consistent with where we found it too. The chaos regions are geologically young and changing. These observations also only took a couple of minutes of JWST time, and we're already seeing incredible results, with hopefully more to follow, especially if we get longer exposures of the moon soon. In 2024, NASA will launch the Europa Clipper mission. This will travel to Jupiter's icy moons and perform dozens of flybys of the moon and investigate whether it really does have conditions suitable for life. This will include flying through plumes being blown off of Europa too. We've seen evidence of these enormous plumes in Hubble images, so we think they do happen, but there's nothing to show it in the JWST data yet. Europa Clipper will aim to fly straight through a plume if they are there, and analyze exactly what is being ejected from the subsurface oceans. 
Clipper will complement the European mission JUICE, also visiting Jupiter's icy moons and recently launched. So the next decade could well see us learning an awful lot about these potential incubator moons. JWST has directly imaged a plume coming off of Saturn's moon Enceladus, so this kind of science is possible. But maybe there just wasn't anything being ejected when these observations took place. Not seeing a plume here doesn't rule them out, just that we missed any with this image and data. We'll have to wait and see if we get more observations soon. Leave any comments and questions you have about all of this in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!